first glance, why would you buy these? What is it? Is it legal? Can it hurt me? Jesus. What? That's not what we talked about. Can it hurt you? And is it legal? Find out after the break. Ryan, no stop. Before we get into it today. Two. Two times. Spoiler, two things. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? Was that the bat from the Great Mouse Detective? <laughs> Before we get started today, two things. One, just another reminder, which I'll keep reminding you about Black Friday coming November 29th. We're going to have 75% off of almost everything in the store and 50% off of all of our new goodies, which we have a lot of really great new stuff, including an After Effects 101 class, which I'm really excited about, a short film 101 class, which is coming from Seth Worley, and a really badass new VFX pack. So definitely set your calendar for that and come back November 29th, where you can get all of that stuff for crazy crazy, crazy low prices. The second thing is that the Master Your Craft competition is back from Rode. This is a competition where you can win a 12 month paid internship with Rode on their creative video team. All you gotta do is make a short film that's one to three minutes in length, submit it, and you could win that internship. And it's not just you coming and being an unpaid, this is a paid internship where you be able to go and live in Sydney and learn from that creative video team. And there will be mentors involved as well, which I will be one of the mentors for that. So if you're a new filmmaker, you're trying to get in the industry, trying to learn more, definitely check this one out. There's a link in the notes below for you. So click, go look, get involved. But now we're gonna dip my hand deep into the mail sack and pull out your question. Perverted. What are some standout lessons learned from creating your short There Comes a Knocking that will make a big difference when it's feature time? Every single thing that I make, I just learn a ridiculous amount from. If it, every short film feels like I'm putting myself through another film school, there, especially when you get to a certain point where I have been lucky enough to make several short films and many with very, very talented people who I was able to learn from. So now I, I'm at a place where there's a lot of of nuance that's uh, that, that are becoming the light switches that are flicking on things that uh, help tie the bow to really bring everything together the things that I find take something from feeling unpolished or amateur into that more polished professional world that you're trying to strive for your entire career and of course a lot of that uh, has to do with who you choose to work with. You know, um, a big factor is trusting the people that you're handing certain creative things off to and realizing this is not a singular sport, it is a team sport, as I've talked about a ton on the show and you hear people say all the time, but it is so true. You know, handing the editing off to Lucas and just sitting in there as a director and sort of guiding the ship takes a thing from 60% to 100%. The same thing with having a cinematographer like Chase and a colorist and the VFX artist and, and uh, the sound designer, all these things pulled together to make something a thousand. So understanding that collaborative sphere and understanding your role within that collaborative sphere and getting the confidence to understand when you can take your hands off the reins and let other people go crazy in that lane and just be there to keep everyone on track. Understanding you're the conductor, not the symphony, that they are the symphony, they're playing all the notes and you're the, just there to make sure everyone you know, is in harmony. That has been some of the biggest takeaways from all my films and especially There Comes a Knocking. That, that really came into full, very clear view for me, which was really, really helpful to understand that you know, what you are in the giant mechanism that is a film, I think was vitally important for me to understand now before getting into feature land. This is not a toy or a concert band. This is an actual light that you can use actually as a light to light things. It comes in two different versions. One is bicolor and one is RGB. It's dimmable and it's actually pretty damn bright for how tiny this thing is. Ryan, no, not again. But the best part about these things is that you can mount them pretty much anywhere. But we'll talk about that after the break because that's what Ryan told me to say. Why are you wearing those? For funsies. I'm an English film student currently at college. I'll be starting September 2020. Would you recommend going to film school or finding work? I've answered this on the show before and it's something you can't really fully answer. It's something you do have to answer for yourself. Uh, for me, I went to film school, but that was back in 2004. And back then you really needed to go to film school. There wasn't stuff like there is online now. You really could take 
film school just online fully and uh, you know find people to network, find like-minded people to work with. Whereas back then that wasn't really a thing. I didn't know anyone. I was in South Florida. There was no real film community to tap into. So I didn't have a lot of options. So at the time film school really was the best first step for me. If I was in the same position now, I would not go to film school personally. Personally, I would learn everything I could online, start making films, find like-minded people, uh, network with those people and then build a real and find a job, which is what I did after film school because I knew enough to start doing those things. But now all that information is readily available and for free or stupid cheap on places like MZ or uh, Masterclass or even some of the stuff that we sell or again, just free on YouTube. You could Google anything you wanna learn and pretty much learn it. You just gotta be careful where you're learning it. A lot of people will put, put out information with the the sense of this is how you do it and I know how to teach you but they have no real work of their own and even the work that they do is not the work that you want to do. It's not of the level that you would respect. So be cautious about those. If it's people that are being like we were in the beginning when we were very green, the opening of the show was want to be a filmmaker. So do I, let's figure it out. Not here's how you do it. It was all about me learning these things and you learning along with us. And it still is. I still, you know, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. Hopefully going to be making a feature relatively soon and you know, I'll be figuring that out too. Um, so those are the people you really want to hear from or people whose work you really respect and you can obviously listen to what they have to say because the work that they do is the work you want to do. So I guess a long-winded answer is for me personally I would not go to film school. If I were to go to school I would go for something else and I would do filmmaking on the side, learn that online and just start making things. You know experience is the best teacher you're going to have and you're going to get that outside of film school anyway. So this thing is crazy light, has a snap bracelet function and is magnetic. So the amount of ways that you can mount this thing are like a lot. For instance, like that or this or under another light. On the knobs. Here. 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 Not here. It's not metal and it's flat. Or here. Tilt down. I'm not tilting down. Tilt down. I'm not tilting down. Tilt down. Disgusting. It's on my wrist. You're disgusting. But where's the other one? Tilt down. I'm not tilting down. Tilt down. I'm not tilting down. It's on my ankle. Is it? No. But how much does this thing cost? I don't know. I'll go check. You need a website. I'm not asking you. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you're a filmmaker, you probably have your own, we're all like freelancers, basically. I mean, even when you're making a short film, like I said before, it's like starting a business. You need a website for your business. Do you want 91% off your yearly hosting plan? Yes, 91% off a yearly hosting plan. You can get that at hostinger.com. You go to hostinger.com forward slash film right, put in the coupon code film right, 91% off. Because 90%, that's not enough. Mm -mm. We're adding one. 91%. That's basically like stealing, right? At that point, you're just stealing from them at 91% off. 91, it's almost an A. I mean, what? There it is an A. It's my A. My yachi. <laughs> <laughs> So Hostinger really is a great place to get hosting services. I mean, if you're doing a WordPress site or any kind of site, you need a place to be able to host everything. And I mean, 91% off, I'm kind of stuck on that. I'm gonna keep coming back to that this entire time because that's insanity. I don't even know, how can you, how, is this a charity? They have a great UI, super clean and really intuitive. I've been using it recently. I created my own account. I'm going through, checking everything out and I am really loving it. So I'm definitely gonna be piping everything over to that because again, I don't know if I mentioned the 91% off thing, but 91% off. So go to hostinger.com forward slash film riot, use the coupon code film riot, get some great hosting services and do it at 91% off. I'm still stuck on that. How? Logo. So how long until you give in and self-finance your first small feature instead of continually waiting for the optimal situation to present itself? To answer this question, I'll start with, I don't think it's giving in and I don't think there's any waiting for an optimal circumstance either. I don't think there is an optimal circumstance. I don't know of anyone who's had one and I definitely don't think it's waiting. Waiting implies sitting on your hands, just putting something out there, hoping someone will let you make it. And that has not been the case. It's never been the case for me. In fact, it's been the opposite. It's 
been a very strategic sprinting toward a hopeful finish line. And that first started by working on the things I knew I needed to work on to gain the knowledge and experience to where I could get to a five-year plan. Once I got to that point and I started that five-year plan, which was a little over five years ago, then it was, I had, I had enough knowledge to know what boxes I needed to tick to be able to get to where I'd be able to set myself up with as much chance of success feature as possible. I never wanted to go out and just get a two hour movie made just cause I could, I could have done that, but it would not have been good. And I had no interest in just getting it done. I wanted to make a good film and to do that, I had to work on my craft and develop that. And I think now I've gotten to the point to where now it's time to, you know, take that next step and go to the feature. So still no waiting. And to get to the feature, it was about developing that story, which has been a little over a year and a half, uh, in development. And the short film that we just put out was a part of that. And that very much shows the vibe, the tone of what I want to do with the script without giving the story away so I could take those things to producers and studios and hopefully get it set up. If that doesn't work, then I'll go to my plan B. My plan B is not me giving in. It's going to another very viable option, which is self-financing, going out and, you know, figuring out for myself and getting it made myself through my company, which again is a totally viable way to do it and would be great in a lot of ways, but also would be me being the studio and the main producer on my first film and I just don't want to do that. I would rather surround myself with people who do this for a living and know what they're what they're talking about that can support me through my first film so I can then, you know, get all the learning under me doing that uh, as I go through that process. So that's my plan A. If that doesn't work, then it's off to my plan B. And uh, all of that, I don't think, has anything to do with waiting or giving in personally. Hi, I Googled it. It's 45 a piece. That goes for the bicolor and the RGB, both of which have an operation time of an hour on full power and four hours on low. Nailed it. I was having a hard time with that well, line you, before. You were nailing it until you said you nailed it. Well, I, it, I was just excited. They are also rechargeable, splash proof, and have a few digital effects built in. Now, will I use this all the time? Definitely not. However, it is a pretty awesome tool to just have on your wrist while you're shooting for any moment that just needs an accent light, an eye light, or a small fill. So without having to set up a whole new light, you just snap this off your wrist and turn it on. And for only $45, it is more than worth the purchase in my opinion. God, you're so cool. That felt sarcastic. It was so sarcastic. So that's it for today. But before we go, if you do not follow us on our Film Riot Instagram, definitely jump over and do that. Every Monday at 3 p.m., we do a movie trivia and the first three people to get that correct win a copy of Shotlister. And we do the winners at 6 p.m. So there's only a three hour window. So definitely jump over, follow us there and be a part of that on every Monday. But now it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this one is a podcast episode. It's from the podcast, uh, The Moment, which is uh, Brian Copelman's podcast. It's a great podcast overall, but he had Christopher McQuarrie on there recently. And just every time that guy opens his mouth, it's an absolute masterclass. I just, I hunt down anything that has any form of interview with him. And I just, I gobble it up because the man is constantly just imparting insane amounts of knowledge and experience and on stuff that no one talks about and with a lot of humility and honesty. So definitely check that out and literally anything with Christopher McQuarrie talking. We'll put a link for that in the notes below as well. Until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.